Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor, and this will be a demonstration of doing a bank reconciliation when using the bank statement as compared to our general ledger cash account and then sometimes referred to as the check register. So here we are, let's take a look at an overview of the project. Here's our bank reconciliation form we're going to use. Here's our first city bank bank statement. And then down here is the uh, cash account general ledger activity showing debits and credits. Okay, so we have, and then over here is our general journal section we're going to fill out with any uh, journal entries that are required as a result of the bank reconciliation. Now, in this, uh, is this bank recon reconciliation is is a real life type of situation here and so we are needing to compare what transactions that happen in our books have actually cleared the bank and so to do that we have a process called chip mark notation so that is the process where we mark off the transactions like seen from the bank statement that have cleared the that or that have cleared the bank. Okay, so let's take a look here in our books. We've got check number 1207 for 125, 1207, so that cleared the bank. So I'm gonna put a little X there that both of those have cleared. And then I've got uh, check number 1208, 315. That's cleared. So when we're all done with this, then I've got 1209 at 285, that's cleared. And 1210 at 1250 at 2150 that cleared, and then I've got uh, let's see 12 uh, check number 1211 at 250, 1211 at 250. Okay, that has not cleared. Okay, and then I've got 1212 at nine, that has cleared. Okay. And then I've got um, 1213 at 200, that cleared. And 1214 at 30 and 1224 at 24, neither ones of those have cleared, okay? So I've got here, I'm just gonna highlight these in yellow just to uh, make it a little bit, stand out a little bit more for us here. And these two did not clear. Okay, so these are in our books, but not in the bank. So that means that the book balance is going to be lower than the bank balance, and we need to, in the bank reconciliation, take these called outstanding checks and list them there as deductions from the bank balance. Okay, now the next step here is to go through and take the deposits and reconcile them. So I've got a deposit for 450 here and that has cleared that for 450 okay that one's cleared and then I have a hundred and fifty and that one is cleared and then I've got 225 that one's cleared cleared the bank is what I mean okay now I've got a deposit on April 30th of 235 that has not cleared the bank. Okay, so that's an outstanding a deposit and transit, we call that. So that has needs to be adjusted. Those two, the outstanding checks and the deposits and transit need to be adjusted to the balance per bank. Now let's see, we'll start off here. And we've got a balance per bank here. Any balance is 3961. Okay, 3961. And then I've got, we're going to be adding deposit and transit and there's only one so and that was 235 okay and then deduct we've got outstanding checks okay and that's going to be let's see we've got uh, uh, 1211 Okay, and that was for uh, $50. And then we've 
we've got uh, 1214. Okay, so 12, check 1214 for 30, 1215 for 24, and that's going to give us a negative balance of deduction equal to minus $104, and then we'll get our total here of this column, or our adjusted balance per bank. Oops, pardon me, one more time, all the way to the top. There we go, so we have an adjusted balance per bank of 4,092. Now, we're gonna do our balance per books. Our balance per books was 3,961. Oh, oh, they smokes a balance per bank. Pardon me, was 3,865. That was the ending balance per bank. The ending balance per books is 3,961. Learn from my instructor errors there. Now, let's take a look at this. So we've accounted for everything that happened in our books that wasn't reflected in the banks, okay, with our deposits and transits and outstanding checks. Now we have items in our bank that, that uh, statement that have not cleared our books, okay? It's these three right here. We have a bank service charge. We've got a debit memo. And we've got an EFT, which is an electronic funds transfer, in the bank statement that are not reflected in our books. Okay, so let's take a look at the details here. We have, uh, we'll take that bank service charge, and that's going to be a deduction in our, from our bank balance because our bank balance is 3961 without recognizing that service charge yet. Okay, so I got... Okay, and that's going to be uh, minus 12. Okay, and then I have a debit memo for 178. Let's take a look at what that debit memo is about. Okay, it says up here, enclosed with the bank statement, which appears below, is a debit memo for $178 that covered an NSF check issued by Doris Fisher, a credit customer. So this is going to be NSF check. Okay, and that is 178. So you see, we had deposited that check, and that check was reflected in the 3961. We get the bank statement, and it shows us, hey, this check bounced. So therefore, we need to take it out of our balance per book. So there it is right there. Okay, and I have an electronic funds transfer of 225, and it says here the 225 electronic funds transfer is a direct deposit by Jerry Burns for service fees due Vacation Paradise. So he apparently purchased or had these service fees done on account. So now he's paid it. He's made the deposit directly to the bank, not to our bookkeeper, so we haven't entered it in our book yet. So we've got down here an addition. We've got, um, let's see, that is Doris Fisher. Okay, okay. Okay, and that's going to be an additional, or well, there's only one of them, so I'll put it right over here. And that's um, $225. Okay, so now we got the 225 accounted for, the bank service charge, and the debit memo. I'm going to go ahead and just get me a total here. Okay, and now we're ready to get our balance per bank. Okay, so we get this whole guy. 39.96. So there we go. Our adjusted balance per bank now equals our adjusted balance per books. We can't proceed until we have that reconciliation. That is uh, the, the essence of a bank reconciliation, to account for the differences. So we've done that. Now we have adjusting entries to do to, so that these differences are accounted for in our books. Now, as we know, the checks in the balance per bank section, the outstanding checks and the deposit and transit are already in our books. So we do not need a journal entry for that. But we have the uh, 
direct deposit and we have the service charges are not in our books and so that is going to be our adjusting entries for there. So let's enter those those adjustments. So we'll start off by uh, booking the service charge. That was uh, miscellaneous expense, $12 debit and a credit to cash for $12 and our explanation is bank service fees. And we skip a line and we're there still on the 30th and we're going to do the uh, NSF check. And an NSF check, that is whenever a bounce check happens, we have to book that to accounts receivable. Slash Doris Fisher because an accounts receivable is a control account and we have a separate account for each individual that owes us. So we're going to be also posting Doris Fisher's account. Okay, and that's uh, $178 to accounts receivable. Credit of $178 to cash. So there we have credited cash $178. Now our explanation NSF check, obviously Doris Fisher. Then our last adjusting entry here is for the uh, direct deposit from the bank. So that's going to be a debit to cash of $225 and a credit to accounts receivable. Accounts receivable and that is $225 and accounts receivable from credited from Jerry Burns for payment payment on account. Okay, so there you go. We have completed the bank reconciliation process. We've reconciled the balance per bank, offsetting its uh, deposits and transit and outstanding checks that we had from our books. We've taken our balance per books and we've entered the transactions that happened in our bank that weren't in the books yet. And we reconciled our balances. Then we journalized those adjustments to books and we have completed the bank reconciliation process. Thank you very much.